Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of our Beyond Stigma series focusing on Middle Eastern and North African representation in the media, where we delve into discussions surrounding different identities and experiences of those who have worked in the media and the arts and entertainment industries. Today we are joined by a very special guest, Hannah Yahya Hassan. Hannah is a Scottish Bahrainian actor, theatre creative, arts consultant and writer. She holds a bachelor's with honours in theatre studies and literature from the University of Kent. And since graduating, she has gone on to work with Rams on the Moon, Scottish Youth Theatre and Birds of Paradise. She has toured both England and Scotland as a performer and shows that she has had a hand in devising. And she is passionate about work that explores the multiple uh, intersections of identity within minorities. Hannah, thank you so much for being here today. Yeah, not a problem. Thanks for having me. No problem. Um, so as a, like a starting point, the first question we've been asking all of our guests is what made you want to pursue a career in this industry um it's always what I've, it's always what i've wanted to do and um, from a very young age i kind of knew um and i started performing very young i started uh i was in my first school plays when i was like five or six um and i had a real good knack of being able to learn lines quite easily so i was usually put in quite big roles um and yeah i was, I was always really into reading and storytelling um so naturally, it's just um, the arts and theatre is what I gravitated towards. So nice. And, and who would you say are your biggest role models in the industry, if you have any? Uh, well, um, definitely from an actor standpoint, um, Viola Davis, I think, does some amazing work just as a screen actor, but also as a theatre actor. She is constantly working. She's got a great work ethic and she really does... Um, stand for something you know she's very vocal on inequalities in america which i think is so important for an actor to do um, and i love actors that are that use their platform to speak about injustices so i just yeah from a hustling standpoint and uh, an activism standpoint i just i love viola davis uh, i you know i love her too i think she's so amazing and her acting is just phenomenal i love it i love her as well <laughs> that's really cool and this is a, another really broad question, but this kind of gets us more into discussing the, the topic. Um, so what do you currently think about the, the current representation of MENA individuals in the media? Well, it depends where you are, um, really. Um, I feel largely, though, um, some places better than others, but um, largely I feel it, it's pitiful <laughs> and it's, it's very inaccurate. Um, whenever I'm uh, watching something that has men or characters in it I always I look at the the Riz test which Riz Ahmed introduced um it's named after him uh when he was giving a talk I believe in the House of Commons and um it was specifically around Muslim characters mm -hmm. and um he asks you know does this Muslim character um are they a perpetrator of terrorism or are they presented as quite angry are they presented as like hating the Western way of life? Are the women quite oppressed um, and 2D? And if like the answer is yes to any of those questions, then, then it fails the risk test. And I find so often they do fail the risk test and, and particularly um, more so as a, working in Britain, I find that the reputation, the representation we see of men and people doesn't necessarily reflect the diversity that we have in the MENA region. It more reflects how the West view the MENA region rather than how accurately, accurately sees. You know, oftentimes I've seen casting directors who they say they're looking for MENA actors, but then will cast outside of the MENA region. You know, they'll say they're looking for a MENA actor, but then they won't actually hire one. Mm -hmm. Which I think just feeds into ignorance you know whether it's done intentionally or not when you've cast someone outside of the men region just because they look like your idea of a men or person then you just feed it you're feeding ignorance you know and particularly in britain i find that oftentimes arab and i can only speak i say arab because you know we are talking about men but i can only speak to my experience as an arab yeah. but um arab and asian actors are seen as almost interchangeable and then maybe it's because in a country like Britain, you have more actors of Asian heritage than Arab heritage. Or I think it's perhaps more because 
Asian actors fit the physical description that the West has been inaccurately fed of men and people in the media more. Um, but I don't think that's a valid excuse not to cast um, re real Arabs um, because it's, I know from my own experience, but um, I know other actors in the MENA region, for example, I know some great actors from Iran who I've never cast in Iranian roles ever. And it's because the West idea of Iran Oh, it's very, very, very <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. Maybe. Um, and definitely in the Middle East, I, I my view has always been that Iranians are quite white and they're paler than us and more Caucasian looking, but the West doesn't know that. It's kind of just like paints with one broad stroke. Whereas, you know, yeah. we've got over 26 countries in the Middle East, you know, it's so diverse and people people don't realize that. And it's, uh, it's very, very frustrating because, you know, if you can't get the white roles because you're just a little bit too ethnic, but then you can't get the roles that are made for your own people because you're too white, um, which I think is just really, really frustrating. Oh, my God. Wow. Like that was, you know, you pointed out so many things that I want to talk about. So the first is the, the Riz test, would you say it was called? Yeah, after Riz I Ahmed. I had no idea that something like that existed and that's so interesting um, and I'll definitely look into that more um so do you think it's something that so where did you learn so did you learn that from your you know working in this industry or did you learn that like quite randomly because I've never heard that before um I actually in I it was brought up in a men a UK workshop I attended a few months ago, Men Arts UK, they sort of came around last year and I joined them straight away. And um, they were talking about um, representation and how often representation is negative. They were talking about a study where these aren't the exact figures, but I can give you approximations from my memory where um, the director, a specific director and researcher had looked at all the films made over the past 100 years that had um, uh, middle men are people in them and how often were the representations positive and how often were they negative and out of sort of a thousand and something films about over 900 of them were negative representations and it's just you can't pretend that doesn't affect how people view us you know because it does and that's all you consume and for me you know I always want to see people who look like, you know, I think everyone wants to see themselves reflected in art and I'd love to see people who look like my family in art or people who speak like my family in art, but it's just really disappointing where you see them and then they're the villain, they're the terrorist, they're the, and it's just, um, it's disappointing. I think just so damaging to a region that has already been, whose reputation has already been quite damaged <laughs> over the past. 20, 30 years. <laughs> yeah. I, I couldn't agree more. I think it's just, like you said, it's so damaging and it's, it's so, uh, like, it's a bit harsh to say, but it's a bit of an ignorant, ignorant way of looking at a whole region that, like you said, is so diverse. And there's so many religions and so many cultures in such, a, you know, such a big region. And the, they have the power to kind of get that representation correct and get positive representation as well. Um, but when you say, you know, 900 out of a thousand of the representations have been negative or poorly portrayed, like, what does that mean for people outside the MENA region that are going to continue looking at us like this? Because, you know, like you said, especially in the news and stuff anyway, like, you know, there's always such negative news about this region, you know, there is. And when you have that and then you have negative portrayals from film and TV, you know, no one outside of that region is going to know anything about us. And it's just such a shame, like you said, because you wanna you wanna watch films that portray someone like you. Like I personally as well have never really watched a film where I've just felt like, wow, that's that's a correct representation. Or I can relate to that on some sort of level. And that's just so sad. What you were saying about the whole Iranian thing as well, it's really interesting because I'm Iranian. And um, I think what you're saying about the whole some Iranians like are very white. So they're not always cast and when they when they do cast an Iranian like an Iranian role it's always like someone but they're just a completely different to what you'd expect yeah and I it think. and it goes the other way because um 
I know this because I was speaking to an Iranian actress who said her agent will only put her for white roles. She won't put her for right. any others because wow. she's quite fair. She's got blue eyes, dark hair. Um, but then she knows actresses who are, are white actresses. They're white British actresses, but on their spotlight profile. Um, and this is, I do have an issue with spotlight, um, which is where most casting directors find actors. Right. Okay. Know, our big thing is spotlights, our directory. And what I find so shocking is uh, when you apply to Spotlight and you have a profile, like a lot of things you have to fill out, you know, your age range, your race. And so you say what race you are, but then on your profile, there's a separate thing that says physical um, description, physical attributes. And you click it and it's a drop down list of different races. Um, so you've told them what race you are, but then it's like, okay, what race do you look like? And uh, I know quite a few white actors who will put Middle Eastern or Mediterranean, even though they're not. And it's because they've got dark hair, darker skin, dark eyes. And it's like, this is what people think a Middle Eastern person looks like. And that, that's such a big issue because there are so many actors and actresses out there from that region that deserve to play that role, you know, especially if they want to. You know, a lot of people uh, from the MENA region might not want to play a role um, that's because I have spoken to people that have said like I don't want to always play a role that's always about me being from this region you know I want to play a broad range of roles which is very fair enough but it's kind of unfair to those that genuinely want to play you know someone from that region and they can't because they look mm. a certain way not like the stereotypical yeah. way that you see that person and but I can I can totally empathize with not wanting to always play that because the stories that are available are always about oh you know um oppression and and you know the, the roles either you're oppressed or you're a terrorist or, the roles aren't quite as, as meaty um when they're specifically looking for people from our region because they tend to stereotype them um so i could totally see the other side of the argument as well 100 percent yeah so it seems to be like an issue not only on the casting side but also on the writing side as well because not enough is put out there of like accurate, positive, you know, stories that even people from the MENA region would want to play. So it seems to be an issue from both. And would you say you as well, because I know you've done a lot of different projects, you know, especially at the theatre. Um, would you say that you yourself have faced that challenge of um, maybe because of the way you look, you, you've not been cast for something in the MENA, like a MENA role or the opposite? Um, well, I found that um, largely people don't really see me as, as being Arab. They don't uh, right. from first glance, because, you know, my hair is light and my skin mm -hmm. is slightly, ta you know, people assume I'm something like Spanish or, or French, because, right. you know, my mum, my mum is Scottish, my mum's white, um, whereas my dad's much, much darker. Um, yeah people get comfortable. I've been in a few sort of theatre sessions where, because um, the thing with theatre is there's so many different departments and you'll be like with wardrobe and then you'll be with lighting and there's so many different people to talk to and people don't always realise where you're from. And because they don't realise where you're from, they feel comfortable enough to say things that are quite offensive um, and say just throw away phrases that just really, um, instantly make you feel quite unsafe um and it's uh it's it's quite frustrating but I think I do a lot of devised theatre and what's quite good about devised theatre is um people care about what you have to say and definitely when you're from somewhere else people are very interested in it you know they want to hear about it they want to talk to you about it sort of more so than they would if you were just, you know, from down the road. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's something that is great when, in terms of, you know, people really want to hear what you have to say, but sometimes it comes up almost every audition, people want to talk about it, um, which is a bit, it's a bit weird and it's a bit exhausting as well. Um, Cause it's, even if it's the role's got nothing to do with my heritage, they see the name, you know, and then they see the face and the headshot and they're a bit like, this doesn't compute in my mind. <laughs> so they want to talk to me about it and I'm happy to talk about it, but it's just, um, yeah, it can be a bit exhausting. And, you know, you have to 
you know, I explain, oh, well, my mom's from here and my dad's from here. And then they're all like, but how did they meet? You know, they can't fathom that a Bahraini and a Scottish person would have met in the 80s. Like airplanes didn't exist. And it's then like <laughs> 10, 15 minutes of your audition is gone because you've had to explain why you exist and how you came <laughs> to exist, um, which is, it, you know, I, I, I appreciate the the inquisitiveness and the wanting to learn about something different from yourself but at the same time you know it's it's not a unique conversation it's one I've had many times oh my and is that is that with the people that you work with like the rest of the cast or is it also with the casting directors and the people it's more, more casting out? yeah it's really? more casting because I think when you're working with people and you're rehearsing a show you've got lots and lots of time together and these things will come up but you're also very con very much want to work on something but with casting directors you know when you go for an audition they, they want to learn about you as much as they want to see your piece they do want to learn about you and talk to you and get a sense of you and I don't know what the experience is like for other people but mm -hmm. but for me so much of it is just about where I'm from um more than anything else really which wasn't an experience I've had in Bahrain it is very Britain specific mm -hmm. And, and how would you say that's affected your career and like your future in this industry, like the visions you have for what you want to do in the future? Well, um, I never intended to get into any kind of activism or be particularly vocal or anything like that. But then I started working in the industry and I started seeing so much that could be improved and could be worked on and, and that's frustrating for me and frustrating from other actors, other men actors, but also I've worked with a lot of actors from different abilities and different disabilities when I work with Ramps on the Moon and it's just, it's, it's made me really want to be, be vocal. You know, I never realized, I mean, growing up in Bahrain, I never realized how important where I came from was until I came here and, and people would make ignorant assumptions or, or, or say things that are just jokes and it's just it makes you want to change things and it, it makes you realize oh I am never just going to be another actor I'm never just going to be able to work on a project because my identity is always going to be a little bit political for people and I'm always going to want to educate them because the ignorance um, can be exhausting. Yeah. yeah, I'm so sorry to hear that, you know, that really affects, you know, that affects you as well. Um, to obviously to have lived somewhere else and then come here where you get treated a bit differently, like you say, where it's always a topic of, you know, conversation everywhere you're working, it obviously affects you know how you view things but also like what what you want to do in the future so it's interesting to hear that you've turned to more activism and kind of talking about stuff so so what sort of things have you done with this activism like could you give us do you want to tell us more about that the activism you've done um well i've done um uh, a lot of work with uh youth groups and right now i'm working with scottish youth theater um on a project called resurgence that's all about um anti-racism and anti um, austerity and anti classism and all that and it's it's mentoring young young people well, young people 16 to 25 year olds so some of them are my age um, about um, creating theater that can feed back to the industry what's wrong with it and that can help channel their voices um, and create pieces of theater that shows the industry what they need to change and I think um, mm -hmm emboldening young people to say what they think is wrong is so important you know young people who are from whether it be racial minorities or you know different classes or people of different gender identities it's so important for them to feel like their uh, opinion matters and what they say matters and they are, it is those people that are going to slowly change the industry very very slowly um because I think when I was younger and I just before I sort of started studying, I very much thought people want actors to be a blank slate. You know, they want you to be anyone you could possibly be, just blank canvas. But that's not true. It really isn't true because they want to look for what makes you uniquely you so you can play a character that's so uniquely them. What can you offer that other people can't? What differentiates you? 
and who you are is so so important as an actor wow that sounds like such such amazing work that you're doing especially with the youth um it's been definitely a topic that's come up a lot with other people i've spoken to as well and getting young people involved how powerful that can be um for the future in this industry as well and you know I was, you know, you said that you've obviously worked in both Scotland and, and England as well. Do you find there's any difference between the work you do there and here in terms of the treatment you get or like just your experiences as a MENA overall between the two countries? Um, it's ma- it is different. It is massively different. Um, Scotland loves more sort of political theatre. Scotland yeah. loves political theatre more so sort of than England. They really want to try new stuff, new voices, whereas parts of England are still very much, you know, let's take this play and try and make it a little different, whereas Scotland's always trying to make new stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, in terms of treatment, I find um, working in different parts of England, England itself is more diverse as a nation than, than Scotland is. Okay. Um but I find that people are more sort of socially engaged and socially switched on in Scotland. Okay. I think just because of um, how Tory austerity has affected Scotland, um, people are a bit more anti-establishment and a bit more, um, you know, there's ignorance on both sides. I've experienced ignorance in both countries, but there's a bit more um, malice sometimes behind the ignorance in England like when I were when I lived in Canterbury there were Britain first marches you know it was a bit diff you know and, and I was in Britain when they voted largely to leave the EU and there was a lot of anti anti-foreign sentiment um where Scotland didn't really want to leave um so it's um the sentiments and the level of sort of um malice behind the ignorance is different but in the arts world it's certainly a lot more open-minded um, than other parts. Um, I have found uh, working with creators in both England and Scotland in the arts world, people are quite open and quite diverse. Um, the older establishments, not so much, but that's the case, I think, in a lot of industries with the older establishments that are run by old white men, there's still a lot of work to do. Um, but certainly just in the day-to-day people I work with, there's there's... Uh, there's there's a lot of openness and willingness to learn I think there's there's a willingness to learn but they're not quite sure what to do yeah yeah they just don't know what how to start really Um, yeah that's so interesting because you know it's you know UK Scotland and England part of the UK but ultimately the culture is still a bit different and you know it's interesting to hear how it's varied and I guess broadly speaking like throughout all the work you've done. Have you worked with a lot of people from the same background as you? Maybe not necessarily just Bahrainian, but from the MENA region, have you? No, I don't. I, I don't. I, I graduated four years ago. And I don't think I've worked with anyone with a similar background. I'm trying to think, I no one, no, I, I mean, I know Arabs in the UK um, and I, mm-hmm. I I know one. Yeah, I've worked with maybe one person from the MENA region, an Egyptian writer who lives in Glasgow. Um, and I was so excited <laughs> to find someone else who speaks Arabic in Glasgow. <laughs> I, was like, oh my God. I was so happy. Um, but I think she's about it. You know, I've, I've worked with lots of people who also had you know Muslim upbringings and things like that but um no I've not worked with I, I, at university there was a few people but in terms of after that in the working world um no I, I was lucky enough I am part of um men at arts UK and there's workshops and things so I've spoken to people that are in all different corners of the UK but I've I've only ever physically met one person Oh, wow, that's crazy. Oh, wow. I mean, I, I've, you know, Men at Arts UK is, is amazing. I, um, I know a lot about them now because of this project. Um, but that's crazy to think, you know, you've done so much work and you only really know one other person. And would you say during uni, you know, you did a degree in yeah. studies and literature. And during your course, you know, I think you said there were a couple of people from the Men region, but 
did they teach anything about representation or did they touch upon this kind of topic during uni? Um, somewhat. Um, I did a module um, called Performing Lives. It was all about autobiographical theatre and it did touch on representation. It never, it touched on representation in terms of um, neurodiversity and disability. Um, it didn't really touch on race. It didn't really touch on race at all. I think even at universities, um, if you're looking at sort of from a teaching standpoint, I think people still see race as a very touchy subject. I think university students and unions and stuff are very keen to talk about race. Yeah. I say that just as I'm remembering that there was a scandal while I was at university. I don't know if you heard about it. I think it was 2016 for Black History yeah. Month. I went to University of Kent and for Black History Month, the University of Kent put Zayn Malik on the posters. What? And Sadiq Khan, oh. the mayor of London. Um, which was a bit, that was the kind of place I was at university, you know, it oh, was wow. very, <laughs> you know, yeah, God, I remember that day, they had to issue an apology, and it was such a non-apology, it was ridiculous, they were just like, we were trying to celebrate all minorities in Black History Month, they're just like, that's not the point, that oh isn't my the point, God. <laughs> um, but at university, I knew I knew one girl from Dubai and, and I knew one boy who is Egyptian. Um, so, yeah, three or four people from the Menor region I knew in a university that had like 19,000 students. Um, I knew three or four. Um, yeah, there wasn't there. Were, I mean, to the, I've lived in Britain now since 2014. So, oh, my God, that's nearly seven years. I am so excited if I hear Arabic in the street. I am so happy. <laughs> There's been multiple points, like I'm in restaurants with my partner and I just, my ears prick and I was like, was that Arabic? <laughs> Can I talk to them? Would it be weird? Would it be weird if I just went up to them? Because, yeah, there isn't, there isn't a lot, um, which I imagine my father, it was probably a lot worse for my father. My father lived here in the 80s mm -hmm. when he studied mm -hmm. here. And it's probably very different then, although he did come up with a bunch of different Bahrainis. But I know the because he's someone who can't pass as white. So the racism he right. experienced was 10 times right. worse. Um, and it was, Scotland was probably far less diverse in the eighties. But um, mm. yeah, we're still, there's not many of us. There really isn't. Oh, I'm so, I mean, I'm quite surprised to hear as well, because you were saying, you know, about three or four Arabs at uni. Was that just in the whole uni or in your course? That's, um, they weren't direct. Some of them were in my course, some of them weren't. And these were people I just happened to meet at right. university. Um, yeah, I mean, I did a joint honours degree. So I did English and theatre. So I managed to meet people from both courses. And then I was on the drama society. And then I knew some people from um, the sort of the, the film, film society. So I had a few different circles going. And there weren't, there wasn't, I was... I was the uh, the I was the flavor the, the one with flavor <laughs> uh, in my uni <laughs> hall. Uh, it was crazy, but it, yeah, it was not it wasn't a particularly um, diverse place. And I also found what makes Britain, or at least my university, that I noticed quite different from Bahrain was people tended to segregate themselves. Right. Um, okay. You know, if I wanted to speak to anyone other than the white kids, it was seen as a little weird because <laughs> people tend to just segregate themselves, um, probably because it's Kent, it's, it's a little smaller. But um, where I grew up, it was very, very integrated and very, very multinational. So you, you, you talk to people from different countries all the time, all the time, whereas mm -hmm. here people like to sort of stick to their own little little groups. Which was, which was weird for me. It was difficult to, to adapt to that. And it's interesting to hear even like, you know, at an academic level, like you were saying, even if the students were passionate about bringing in race into the subjects, you said that, you know, sometimes the lecturers were a bit scared. And it's interesting to hear that. Why, why do you think they're scared to talk about it, talk about race? Well, I think it's a different generation. And that generation is still trying to catch up. You know, I think they very much think 
a woke culture is going at a million miles an hour and they can't keep up with what they can say and what they can't say, that kind of... I think there's such a pressure now. Um, I think people think there's a right way and there's a wrong way and you constantly have to get things right. You have to say the right thing or say nothing at all. You know, people are scared to accidentally say the wrong thing or, or, or misstep uh, as people so often do. Those are the people that care. Some people just don't care. Um, but I think now, especially when you're overseeing hundreds of, of students, there is, a, there is a fear about getting things wrong. Um, so it's best to just leave it. <laughs> And I think it's a, you know, academia, they're very, you know, when you're learning something, you know, especially learning from a book, it's that way, this is right, this is wrong. And I think that's why it's maybe difficult for them to talk about because they think like there's no, there has to be a right or a wrong answer where sometimes you just have to talk about it. You have to bring it to light. And, but, you know, you said that you're a writer as well. Is that correct? Yeah, I've done some writing, yeah. So in your writing, have you managed to, talk about the kind of things that you talked with me about, about amplifying voices and Nina. And yeah, yeah, I actually um, have. I actually finished a series of writing workshops that culminated in a wee, it was supposed to be live, but a Zoom performance just last month um, where I wrote, it was led by Sara Sha'arawi, uh, who is the, the, the other Arab that I know um, in Glasgow, the only one, um, and Stellar Quines. Um, it was all about, um, Muslim women writing their own experiences and I've written bits and pieces before but I think what I very much struggled with was when you're a woman and when you're a woman of colour and you're talking about your experience it's always inherently political because you speaking is political and that can be quite exhausting and what I quite liked was being in that room where all the other women were part of a minority, maybe not the same minority as me, but um, mm -hmm. they were. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I didn't have to worry about how I felt about my identity being seen as quite radical, you know, and I could, uh, I actually wrote a little play uh, called The Weight of Yourself um, that's about um, sort of the inner monologue that goes on in an actor's head um, a mixed race actor's head when they have to go to an audition and, and what it's like when people view you a certain way but you actually are another way um, and I actually really I really enjoyed that it felt safer just writing in, in a group of women who, who who knew the experience who knew what you were where you were coming from and I think so often people don't think about the people that they're writing for and who can relate to their writing. And even though some of these women were, were British, Pakistani and not necessarily Arab, they could really relate to this not being seen as Arab enough and being seen as too Arab. Because I think when you are, when you're a third culture kid or when you are mixed race, there, there's always this, this line where one side views you one way and the other side views you another. And it's, um, it's an important part of your identity. And I, I very much uh, mixed, not half, I think, is, is something I always sort of say to myself and say to other people, you know, you're not half anything. You are a whole person. You are you're mixed, mixed, you know. Yeah. 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 You are not just having, you know, you are equally both parts. And I think that's what some people struggle with I think when you very much come from one place and your family has all come from one place and you've always spoken this language and you've always followed this religion it can be very hard when you interact with a person who's like no I am equally part of this and this they want to go but where's home where where do you feel at home where's and it's like it can be both it can be both. that doesn't take anything away from either side so you grew up in Bahrain, so you came here in 2004. How, how old were you when you came here in 2014? I was, I just turned 18. You lived there your whole life before that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'd been to Scotland on holidays, lots to see family uh, and things. Um, but yeah, my, I was born there, raised there. Um, I couldn't wait to get out. I really couldn't. I couldn't <laughs> wait to get out and go to the UK for university. <laughs> and now I look and I just, I see why I wanted to get out. But also I just value 
I realized how special certain parts of it was and how much I really valued how how diverse it is how accepting it is yeah. also just the way of life is, is a lot more um sort of laid back uh, and yeah. people are, are, are quite um I think also just because I've been working in, in theatre and living in big cities, people are very, you know, go, go, go all the time. Whereas in Bahrain, people are quite laid back, have a cup of tea, sit down. <laughs> you know, it's, um, I very much, uh, I very much miss it. If I could, if I could have the career I have here over there, I probably would, would be there, but I unfortunately can't. <laughs> right. Is it, so you, did you do acting when you were there as well? Yeah, yeah, I did. Um, I did lots of uh, amateur dramatics. I was in lots of school plays and things like that. And then I studied at school. I studied drama at school. Mm -hmm. uh, got to do little plays with that. Um, so yeah, there, there is there is a fair amount to do. Yeah. And as a closing question, um, that I've been asking everyone. So, what do you think? What do you want to see be done in the future to ensure better representation in the media and in this industry overall? Um, well, in the arts, it all starts with education. It really does. Um, if arts programs at schools and local theatres were funded better, then more people from diverse backgrounds could have those opportunities to get involved. Because, you know, after years of austerity, even the arts have, has, you know, it's financial gatekeepers and it needs to be accessible to everyone because unless it's accessible to everyone from a young age, by the time they're older, they would have fallen out. They would, you know, if that's not for me, why should I be here? You know, um, so I think it starts from the 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 education in the arts. For, so from schools, but also drama schools, um, I think need to get more diverse pupils in, in terms of race, in terms of ability, in terms of class, because classism in the arts is a whole, whole other issue. Um, so I think it starts with education. Um, and I also think platforms like Spotlight, I was mentioning earlier, they set the precedent. Um, and I think very much for men and people, because um, I know so many men actors who either are constantly pigeonholed, are constantly pigeonholed or just never get to play their race. And I think what your race looks like is defined by what you look like, not what they think you should look like. Yeah. You know, yeah. you look like the race that you are. Um, and I feel if people are constantly suggesting that actually you look like this, not like this, it does strip away from your identity a little bit, uh, and then just feeds the ignorance. You know, it, it feeds into the ignorance. But you know, men are people. I mean, it's such a such a big big region of the world. People look different you can have people who are really white you can have people who are really dark you can have people with pin straight hair you can have people with afro hair you can have people with green eyes blue eyes brown eyes it's the hairs are all different color you know it all depends on where you're from the region there's it's so diverse and it's not just one thing and i think it starts with um letting actors play the roles that that, that they are culturally entitled to <laughs> um and then perceptions will change yeah. And also, like you said, having the education there in the first place will teach them to, to realize that, you know, this is a big region. People look very different and it's not always how you how you think they look, but, you know, this is actually what they look. Um, so, yeah, 100 percent couldn't agree more. And yeah, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much. I really, really enjoyed this discussion. But I will link Hannah's uh, social media platforms in the description box below. And thank you so much for being here. Um, hope to speak to you again soon in the future. No problem. Thank you.